In this video, I'll be covering the implementation of outlines in Pygame. This video is the first of its kind on my channel, and it'll be the first of a series where I cover more advanced topics and go in depth on how they work. I'll also not be writing very much code in these videos. I'll show you the code and explain how it works, but I won't be writing it on screen like I do for my lower level tutorials. So Pygame does not natively support outlines, so you have to use some tricks to get them. Uh, the easiest one I've found is to use the mask functionality that Pygame has. A mask in computer graphics is basically sort of like an image where everything is kind of like white or black. It's like on or off, that type of thing. One or zero. Pygame has a way you can uh, convert images into masks where like the transparent parts or the black pixels or whatever will turn into either the one or the zero in the mask. In Pygame, people mostly use the masks for pixel-perfect collisions, and there wasn't very much functionality for converting masks back into images in older versions of Pygame, but in Pygame 2, you can just straight convert the mask back into a normal image so that you can basically turn images into two colors, which is very convenient for a lot of purposes. In older versions of Pygame, pretty much all you've got is mask.outline, Mask.outline returns a list of points that make up the edge of a mask. However, it's not, it doesn't include the inner edges. So if you see here, there's this white circle right here, but it doesn't appear in this. It would only return the edge points. And you can use these to make a polygon and uh, draw lines between all the points. And that's one way you can get an outline. Since Pygame allows you to specify the width of the line when you're drawing lines, you can actually get a wide outline uh, that's more than one pixel big using the points that make up the outline. But in this video, I'll mostly be focusing on uh, one pixel outlines since that's mostly what I do. Although I'll explain how you can get wider outlines when I go over the code. I'm not sure if you can tell, but this outline is not actually outside of this image. If you overlay this image over the outline, you'll see that it's actually the edge of the image. It's not what's going around it. This means you can't just use these points to make the outline, which is why you have to use the wider lines if you use this method. There is actually another option though to use something like this to get outlines, and that is to take this image and copy it in every direction by one pixel. And now that I've pasted a bunch of those, I can put this right here, and you can see there's a black outline. So by pasting one of the outline in every direction, you can basically make up an outline out of the inner edge. And that's the concept I'll be using for two of the methods for making an outline. The first method is the one where you draw a line between all the points, but unfortunately Pygame's uh, line function creates some imperfect lines at lower resolutions. Well, technically it's imperfect at all levels, but it's extremely noticeable at lower resolutions. One of the methods I'll be using is using the uh, two surface function that comes with Pygame 2, and it creates something like this out of it. And this leaves the hole in the center. But much like before, if you copy and paste this over here, you'll see that's just the silhouette. So you need to do that thing where you copy and paste this basically in every direction so you get a real outline. And then once you've done that, you'll get a true outline with the inside of this hole here filled in. So now let's take a look at some of the results using these methods. The first method I'm using is the one, like I said, where you draw a bunch of lines between the points that you get from calling the dot outline function on the mask. If I overlay the image here, you'll see that there are some points near the top where the outline got a bit messed up, and it'll be kind of different on every image how this stuff messes up, but you do not get perfect outlines if you use that first method where you draw between points. The main features of this method are that it can be applied with li wide lines to get thick outlines, but unfortunately it's got those missing pixels up there, and it doesn't cover the inner edge. So let's take a look at the second method using the mask.2 surface from Pygame 2. This one is pretty much perfect. It's got the outline in the center here where it should be, 
And if I hide the image, you can see it's a silhouette and it's made out of four images where the mask was put in four different locations to create that outline. This one's pretty ideal. It's just that it's only available in Pi Game 2, which is still in development. Uh, and then here's the third method. This one creates an outline by basically creating the image from the points given for the outlines. And then I just pasted them in four different directions. Well, I blitted them in four different directions and you get something like this. And when you put the image over it, you get the perfect outer outline, but it doesn't do anything in the middle for that hole there. So the main advantage of this one is that it's available for all versions of Pi game, and it also has the perfectly drawn lines going around the edge, and its downside is that it doesn't cover the middle properly. I've run some tests on all of these methods, and surprisingly they're almost all the same performance-wise for Pi game 2. However, if you're running a normal Pi game, I did find that the third method is a little bit slower than the first method. So now let's go and take a look at the code. So method one creates a mask from the image it's given, and then it gets all the uh, points that make up the outline. Remember, it's a list full of points. And then this is just something that goes through all those points and adjusts the position so it could be rendered in the correct location. This function doesn't take in uh, the surface that it renders onto, it just assumes it's display. But yeah, as you can see, this one's the simplest. It just takes the points and draws a polygon between them. And this one uses a thickness of three, which is what uh, the first method you saw from earlier used. That's how you got that pretty much one pixel outline. You can get a bit thicker too. I wouldn't recommend using this method if you're doing pixel art. It's probably best if you're going to use a width like 10 or something for a really wide outline. Well, maybe not 10, more like, five, I don't know. But yeah, for my uses, this is pretty much useless because I do pretty much exclusively pixel art. Now, if we take a look at method two, this is the one that uses mask.toSurface where it converts the mask back into a surface. So you basically get a surface that's two colors where one color is where the image was and the other color was where it was transparent pretty much. And you make sure you set your color key on that mask so you can split it in a bunch of places, um, and you can get a combined image. These are the four blitz in every direction to get that perfect outline. And remember, this is the one that fills in the hole in the middle. And here's method three. Method three takes all of the points in the outline. You can see it gets it here. It makes a mask surface here, and then it uses all those points in the outline to set pixels to white on the mask surface. Then the mask surface's color key is set and all of the images can be blooded in the different directions to get that outline. So now that you've seen how this works, I would like to show something that I made uh, just messing around with this concept of blooding a bunch of images in different directions. I'm not going to really be looking into the code for it. This is more of just like proof of concept and uh, just an example of something you could do with uh, this kind of outlining concept. So here it is. I can basically move my mouse around and it creates this line here. Well, blob with a tail basically. I can move it wherever I want and stuff like that. And then I can press a button and it shoots stuff out. And it stays there. And you can see there's a nice outline effect where if I go inside the spots where I press the button to do that weird explosion, it doesn't draw a bunch of lines where it shouldn't. It connects very nicely right there. You can just do that again and stuff. So yeah, this uses the outlining concept where you use four images in different directions to create that outline. And if I press a button, I can go back to seeing what it really is. So I'm dragging around this thing that's just drawing a bunch of circles basically behind my mouse. And the other parts where I press that button, there's that explosion of white or whatever. Uh, that's just a permanent surface that keeps track of all of those. And they're combined together, and then I can create an outline out of, of these two surfaces, and I get this. Oh, oops, this. But yeah, it takes that image, and it flips the colors, but the black section becomes transparent, and then it's blitted in the four directions, and then it takes that original image and blitz it over top. If I didn't do that final step where I blitted the original over the top, you would just end up with this, but basically with the colors inverted and everything looking a little bit wider. The extra blit on top is what makes it appear as an outline. So I'll go back to paint and make an example of what I was doing here. 
So I've basically got this black square. I can take this black square and paste it in the four directions. And now I've got kind of a rounded black square. But if I take that original black square and then instead it were white. So let me just do a different color background for clarity here. You can see you end up with basically an outline. So if I switch this background color back to white, you basically end up with this outline here. You can do this with pretty much anything. So let's take the star tool and paint. It's kind of an ugly star, but whatever. And I'll do the same process. So as you can see, I've just made an outline of that star using that method. So you can use this method for pretty much anything and it works very well. Uh, it can get expensive on performance if you're working at higher resolutions, which is why at higher resolutions, I'd recommend using something closer to that method where you're drawing the polygon. It makes sense anyway, because that's how you get the thicker outlines instead of just one pixel. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this episode. You can find all of the code for both the things I've shown in the description, and I'll also be linking to the documentation for Pygame for the mask, so you can go read it for yourself if you're interested. If you're interested in my projects, you can go follow me on Twitter, and if you have any questions, you can go to my Discord server. I've got a dedicated channel there where you can go and ask them. I'll be able to answer them mu there much quicker than I would on the comments to this YouTube video, even though I do check them here. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.